Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatria. Hi, everybody. You are looking gorgeous today. Oh, thank you. Wow. Wow, thanks. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> we are here to discuss Welcome to Plathville. Yes. And also we are going to cover a little bit of unexpected. Because we forgot last week. We can do it last week. <laughs> Oops. And some things have been happening and we do want to talk about that. Yeah. Now, before we get into all of that, we want to remind you, please, hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically in correct podcast we say a lot of bad words and we have very stupid opinions and so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster but if you're ready to party welcome to this one and if you are ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party's at okay and if you are watching on youtube first of all thank you Hi. please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly everything you do really helps us in the algorithm and that helps us to grow thank which you. means get fatter <laughs> fluffier as it were and that's what we want yeah. we're raccoons in this dumpster for a reason thank you thank you in advance now before we get into <laughs> welcome to plathville I do just want to address that you got a DM Uh and this happens every season for us. All the time. We get these DMs, we get reviews on um, different podcast platforms Mm -hmm. from a variety of people who stand so hard. They go 10 toes down for Olivia Plath. Yeah, we got a couple comments on YouTube too. Did we? Yeah. Okay, so basically what was the comment about? Just, I mean, the overarching theme of these is, why do you guys hate Olivia? The Olivia hates too much. Why do you hate her? And may we remind you, <laughs> <laughs> we've always been hating her. Yeah. She's a lot nicer to her than I am. I try. I really, I'm I try. way more mean. But this is not new. I don't know where y'all come from. Yeah. I, I, we say at the beginning of the podcast every yes. time, if you're sensitive, don't listen. Yeah. You're not going to agree with everything that we say, and that's totally fine. Yes. Um, and I do want to say, especially after this week's episode, I like Olivia a lot more without Ethan. I know you I know you don't like her, what? but I like her a lot more without Ethan. I think Ew. she's interesting. I think her pursuit of personal development, I think that's interesting. I'm here for it personally. I think it makes for a more interesting podcast when you've got two people on different <sighs> sides in terms of opinions. Sure. And so I'm not here to like stand for her and I'm going to call her out because they do think she's a malignant narcissist, but she's also a kid. And also for people who like write us and tell us like that our opinions are too much or we're going too far. Suck these nuts. (laughs) Suck these nuts. I don't care. I'm 100 years old. I've been on this planet for forever. These are my opinions. If you don't like it, come over here and suck these nuts. For real. That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel No offense. Please. (laughs) No offense. No <laughs> That's we're telling them to That's suck literally these nuts. how I feel. Like, can't we just all get in the dumpster and have different opinions? I mean, we're just talking about reality TV. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Uh, Sheesha. God, for real. Furthermore, everybody can get it. Oh my god, we hate everybody on, on this cast. Welcome to Plathville. Every single person on this cast can get it. We yeah. hate everybody. Yeah, except for maybe Barry. And um Isaac. And Isaac. And the three littles. Yeah. The, the three tenders. littles, they're innocent. We like the tenders. Yeah. But everyone else? Yes, we are here for it. Yeah. So if you can't handle it, if you're too sensitive, don't I listen. Mean, uh, find another podcast. Bye. Honey. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all we want to say. Well, we do love you. <laughs> yeah, sure. And we're happy you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you hate us. <laughs> yes. Oh, Olivia God. did um, look at some of our stories last year, didn't she? She did. I think she looks for like who's mentioning her, uh-huh. who's talking about her, mm-hmm. and she follows all of that. She's very interested in her image. Well, and I don't want to get too conspiratorial, but after she watched our stories, then we got a bunch of negative reviews on Apple oh. talking about how we were internalized misogynists. <laughs> Or whatever, because we hate her. So <laughs> I'm just I saying, don't hate her. She hates her. Uh, you hate her too. Last sometimes, season, you hated her. Oh my hardcore. god, season four, Olivia. Oh my god. I uh, hated her. Horrible. Forever. Did I hate her? I will hate her when it's appropriate. Yeah, 
and it's my opinion and you you can't take it away from me. No. All right, let's get into the episode. All right. Well, let's start with Ethan and Olivia at the beginning of the episode because we kind of wrapped up oh, yeah. their conversation from last episode, which was about the divorce papers. She flew to Minnesota without telling Ethan. She told the producers, though, probably. And Ethan was a little blindsided. It's the next day after their kind of tense argument well not really argument but their tense meet up after she flew in and she was like yeah um are you mad at me and he's like yeah of course i am so the next day he's sad Mm -hmm. he's kind of having a change of heart he misses her he's seeing how beautiful she looks i mean she's objectively gorgeous and i say this all the time so i don't hate her completely that's not a personality trait though no it's not somebody can be pretty but that doesn't make them a good person exactly or a healthy person they can still be very very toxic for sure sometimes i feel like that's all we give olivia is that she's gorgeous there I mean, are other things i'm sure some redeeming qualities some raw materials that we can call out because we're always just calling out her beauty but sometimes i feel like that's all she has <laughs> i feel like that's all she has She's intelligent. Yes, she's smart. She's very smart, Mm -hmm. but that can also be toxic. (laughs) Right. She's a a talented photographer. Yes. I mean, her photography is is good. Yeah. So she comes over on that second day. They sit down. They're talking about when they're going to be able to get this divorce done. Olivia just wants the paper signed, honey. She wants the division of assets. She doesn't want to prolong this longer than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And Ethan is just not ready. Yeah. And this is the scene where he actually asks her, like, is there any chance at all that we can stay together? And Olivia just shakes her head and she's Mm. like, no. That was so sad. It was really sad. I felt bad. I said last week, like, I've had conversations with, like, beautiful men that wanted to stay in relationships with me because... How could you not? (laughs) Duh. But I had to let them down and I had to say no. And I'm sure many, many people out there can relate to just how difficult that was. I felt so bad for Olivia. Me too. And I felt really bad for Ethan. Me too. It was a sad moment, but she's like, nope. Nope. It's over. She's already fucking somebody else. I mean, let's be real. Oh, totally. Well, because she's acting like she's not and she's new to dating and she's new to life. So Mm -hmm. we think she's out there slanging the poon. Oh, yeah. She's dating. She's probably fucking. And that's totally fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. She's out of this divorce. She's out of this fundamentalist cult that she's been in. So, like, that's fine. Get your dick on, girl. That's great. Well, she even goes to pains to say, like, we are not legally divorced. Yeah. But as soon as we both decided that this was over, I felt spiritually in my heart in my pussy. that I was divorced. Maybe in her pants, yeah. too. Maybe in her pussy, she felt yeah. divorced. And so do- that does give her kind of permission to get out there. Totally. And she's been done with the marriage for a long time. Let's be real. We've been seeing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's been done since probably the end of season four. So, I mean... It's fair. It's just Ethan who is very still much like he's very still much in love with her. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I think I fucked up the words there. I don't care. <laughs> uh, but he's like so She's, he's still very much in love with her. Yes. But here again and I'm sorry and you're going to hate me but I just I have to hate- say like I don't get it Ethan. You're the one who said she could never be the one for you because her values had shifted and changed. I don't get it Ethan. It's his first she's love. She's not cooking you three square meals. She's not being a traditional wife. So you told her you could never have a family with her. You told her you couldn't be with somebody like her. So I yeah. don't get it Ethan. Why are you so sad and crying all red faced because she's telling you no it's over. You're the one who said it. So cry harder. Well it's not always that easy. Emotions are complicated he's also young too and he's a a shadow empath like we've talked about Mm -hmm. before so he's kind of dumb with his emotions and doesn't know how to feel them until they come up and then when he sees her it's like i miss her yeah but did you notice how he told the producer that he didn't realize how much he wanted her back until he saw her yeah which kind of takes us back to the beginning when we're talking about aesthetically how she looks yeah it's like not until he sees how painfully pretty she is that he wants her back. So why do you want her back? Because you don't talk about the same things. You're not interested in the same things. Is it just the sex? Is it just because she's pretty? It's probably just the idea of it all. Like, and they got together so young. I mean, they were together for a few years before they got married, I'm pretty sure. And they were totally boinking. They were blowing each other yeah, in the car. But at the like, time so of the first this, love. Yeah, but at the time of this conversation, they've been separated for like eight months or something. So something they like have that, not yeah. been around each other for a really long time. Yeah. So I don't under I don't understand. But the thing is is he doesn't process 
his emotions. Exactly. So he doesn't even know why he's feeling the things that he's feeling. Yeah. And he doesn't have the tools and the resources to stop hammer time and check out <laughs> what's going on psychologically yeah. within himself to understand his own motivations. So he's always going to be in this weird place with Olivia because he doesn't know how to heal from her. Yeah. And I think it's a maelstrom of emotions within him. It's like the bitterness that he feels for Olivia and the anger, but also the love because she was the first girl he had ever been with. And it's the idea of the this like marriage that they had they got married so young and then nobody wants to get divorced that shit sucks even if you have a terrible relationship it still sucks so i mean i think he's just feeling a lot and i'm giving him a lot of credit i, I know people are gonna be like why do you mm-hmm. love elite ethan so much i don't i think he's dumb <laughs> i think he needs to go to therapy and learn how to communicate and feel his emotions in an adult way but he's also young just like olivia is she's not handling everything properly either so it's just kind of a shitty situation. What? I mean, well, what's she doing that's not proper? Like, um, I mean, she's left because he said he can't have a relationship with her, can't have children with her, can't be married to her. So she's left. She's got her photography business. She's living her life. She's hanging out with her sister. Her brother passed away. I feel like everything, at least that we're seeing, shows her as fairly well adjusted and trying to move on. I mean, in this in this snapshot of her life, I understand like for the four or five previous years that she was married to him, mm-hmm. like she did a lot of she fuck was terrible. shit. Yeah, that was bad. But right now, I mean, what I'm seeing, I'm liking. Well, it seems like she left when things were kind of like not really resolved and she left without giving a shit about their lease and their apartment. So now he's working two jobs to have to pay for their apartment that they have. And she's yeah, but he didn't really say photos. that. You don't really know that she's not sending half of the uh, I doubt. rent check. Well, he's but, having to work two jobs. But it hasn't been established. It's implied. So you are speculating. I mean, she might be paying. She just left. That. Maybe TLC is paying for that. Well, but he said he didn't love her. We could go on and on I mean, this. we could fight about it <laughs> on and on and on. But he didn't say he didn't love her. He said they weren't compatible. She yeah. doesn't share the same values. And he had a list and she didn't meet his. A list of three things. <laughs> right. His three deal breakers. She didn't meet it. Yeah. So, I mean, they're just not right for each other. Agreed. That's the moral we of the can story. Agree on that, yes. Yes. And I understand your frustration with why Ethan can't just get over it. But it's like, you know, it's one of those things. It's hard. They were together mm-hmm. for seven years. Like, I'm the kind of person I would take a long time to get over it. Yeah, but you'd also be in therapy. Facts. And you'd also be like hanging out with well-adjusted people. You'd probably be in a raccoon support group. Yeah. You'd be doing things to help yourself on like in this season of your life. Ethan is not doing any of those things. He's working two jobs. He's living in the same apartment. He is trying not to face all of his emotions. True. So this is why he gets tomato red in the face and he doesn't know what to do. And he slams his hands down on the chair and he gets angry because he's a big toddler. He's a big dumb toddler. (laughs) He really is. And I mean, I will give Olivia credit. I mean, she's coming in there totally put together, looking gorge, and she's glowing and living her best life. And she's choosing her words. I mean, I do Mm. kind of co-sign what you were saying last week like maybe she was trying to intentionally trigger him by yeah. bringing up like well how's your family now like I, I can see that a little bit but she does seem to be overall generally speaking like trying to choose her words trying to be kind trying to be reasonable and on the second meeting the the meeting that we're talking about when she comes over on the second day he seems to be trying to yeah. but at the end of this he's like I just can't do it right now yeah I know you want to sign the papers I know you want to get to the division of assets but i am not there emotionally so now olivia's gonna have to come back to minnesota at some time in the future and they're gonna have to finalize it or just have somebody serve the papers you can do it remotely i mean it's not like you have to fly out there but where are the cameras that's where i want to be exactly that's where it comes down to (laughs) and then we have um kim her sugar body and ken Before you say anything else, I have to ask the question. I have to scream it into the void. (laughs) And I have to say, are we ever going to talk about her motherfucking DUI? Nope. Like the fact that she raised this entire family to not eat any sugar while she clearly (laughs) snuck away to the barn and ate a lot of sugar, okay? All those kids are thin and thin fit and uh-huh. athletic and active and here's kim with her sugar body she's getting it somewhere yep and she taught them not to drink and she taught them not to do drugs and she taught them not to be promiscuous and they grew up in this religious and disciplined life and then of course she left the family she blew it all apart she has an adulterous 
relationship, like legally an adulterous relationship yep. with Ken Palmer. And she had a DUI. She cracked up her vehicle. She was drunk yep. and she was arrested. And we're not going to talk about it on this show. We're just pretend no. that that never happened. That is, to me, if I'm a producer on this show, I want to make sure we're talking about this because this is how you raised your family. And now this is how you're acting. Yep. Like make it make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't know if it's maybe the family agreed to not bring it up because they don't want to humiliate her. Like maybe it was like a total mistake. Maybe she's not always driving drunk. I don't know. But it just feels disingenuous to not talk about it and have her be like, yeah, I made a dumb fucking mistake. And I drove after a few beers after fucking Ken. And <laughs> I got I got arrested. Or like I'm I really DUI. depressed because yeah. I'm getting a divorce. Right. And I can't connect with some of my children. And I made a mistake. And I yeah. really regret it. Like, I would respect that. Oh, yeah. I would respect her. Yes. If she could be honest well, about it. I don't know it. if I'd respect her. I would for being honest Yes, for it. being honest, I would yeah. respect that. But we're just going to pretend none of it is happening. It's... Well, wild it's because she's a narc and she's concerned about how she's being perceived on tv notice how she's also talking about the divorce and like blaming it on barry mm -hmm. and how it's taking so long because of barry because he's not resolved and we're having to divide all the assets and i'm getting frustrated at barry for the divorce it's like well you guys got a lot of shit that you have to divide i'm, I'm sure a lot and i'm sure she's fighting for a lot of money. Well, and they're talking it through. So I don't think they actually filed the divorce papers until recently. Oh, really? Yeah. And I think we, I sent you the link on Instagram. We saw oh, yeah, a yeah, copy yeah. of Barry's filing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's asking her for child support. Yep. It sounds like, it feels like the kids, the little ones are spending most of their time with him as opposed to on a boat. Yeah. What kind of predators are in that marina? I and I'm know. not talking about wildlife. I'm talking about people. No, for real. In that like, marina bathroom. And your little girl has to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night because she's got her period or Ew. something. Like, who's there? Kim, are you escorting them? No. I don't trust it. Neither does Barry. And so he's seeking child support, which I love. I mean, yeah, if he's getting 50% custody, he should be getting child support. But at the time of this filming that we're watching, they haven't even filed yet. So what are you talking about, Kim? And she says it's been two years almost mm -hmm. since they separated. And that's like, her oh, fucking with the timeline. I don't yeah. necessarily believe that. I don't I don't think that that's right. And I mean, she said she's been with Ken Palmer for a year and a half, but then they've been separated for two. I'm like, hmm. Mm -hmm. seems like it's been the other way around like you've been with ken this whole time i don't believe you yep and then we kind of hear from ken because he's talking about how he did offer to have her live with him mm -hmm. in his house in florida is he drunk while he's saying that he's kind of slurring his words yeah, but a little I mean, bit maybe i was like actually not to make a joke of it but i was actually wondering like maybe he's had a stroke or something like something's a little off about him and I'm not making fun of that not in the least either that or like does this man drink all the time is that like what him and Kim have in common Maybe. because I can spot an alcoholic based on the redness of their Same. face and yeah. the swollenness of their face <laughs> and their complexion like I can clock you really fast yeah some about Kim Palmer is giving me alky teas a little bit and now some about Kim is giving me alky teas and oh, she's getting sure. a little more swollen herself no offense a as little, the resident swollen raccoon. A little plump and I'm just there. saying she's consuming even more sugar mm. than she normally does in the form of alcohol sugar. And then making dumb fucking decisions by buying a houseboat. Why? Literally, why? It makes no sense. Didn't I tell you, though, that she was spending the majority of her time with Ken Palmer and she brings it up in their scenes together. Yep. She's like, Ken asked me to move in with him, but I didn't want to do that until I'm divorced. And so I bought this crummy AF boat so that when my littles come over, we can just be in the marina and, and grill steaks and stuff. It's weird. And take shits in the marina bathroom. <laughs> and I'm sure that's so fun for them. Yeah, I'm sure they but love it. But every other minute of her day is spent with Ken Palmer. Oh, 100%. Yes. It's super fucking weird. Then she also kind of talks about the kids. She's mentioned this a couple times in this season, how it took them a while to get used to Ken, but now they're coming around. They're starting to warm up. Honey, none of those adult kids like him. None of them i don't even think the littles like them they're just going limp because they have to i think amber said something about he's fine i like him now or maybe i saw that in a preview we know that lydia doesn't necessarily 
cotton to him. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine Mariah does. I think all those kids are nice to him and they're accepting that Ken is the new person in their mom's lives. But none of those older kids like him, except Uh, Isaac, who I guess flew with him. Yeah, but I'd love to hear what he thinks about all of it. Yeah, it's he seems a little silent about how he feels about all this. And I'm just waiting. I feel like he's going to say something in this season. They're going to have to. Mm -hmm. But The only person that hasn't come around to it is Barry, of course. But Kim says Ken Ken is willing. Ken shows up to drop off the kids or pick up the kids or whatever. And Barry doesn't want anything to do with him, which I love. And Ken gets out of the car when she picks up or drops off the kids. Yep. Like to shake his hand, to say hi. And Barry doesn't want any part of that. Look, you can't fuck up a guy's entire life and then be upset at how he reacts. I know. Like Like, you really don't have the right to get butt hurt that he doesn't want to know your slam piece. I mean, I love it. I wish Barry would be mad though. Like I wish Barry would say something to I think Barry's mad. I think he's just very composed for his family and for the cameras. But I think he's pissed. Oh, see. And he's probably dragging out the divorce. He's probably not going to let things go. I love again that he's pursuing for child support. I think he's being a little petty and I don't think there's anything she can do about it nope and you can't turn me against barry i think it's great i think he's well deserved to be petty he can fight for every little penny that you guys have i don't give a fuck Mm -hmm. you ruined this whole entire family kim so fuck you and your sugar body agreed gosh and then we have olivia in phoenix arizona this was so interesting with lydia grace her sister so i guess lydia grace broke up with her schlub of a boyfriend we saw last season cj or something yeah they were long term they were living together she broke up with him at the same time conveniently that olivia breaks up with ethan and now she's living in phoenix ethan breaks up with olivia whatever I think it's both of them. They both didn't want to be together. But I just think it's interesting that both these girls are now single and living their single lives. I kind of love it for them. I mean, they are beautiful. Did you see their hot little yoga bodies? Girl. I mean, this is the time of their life. They need to be single. They need to be out at the bars. They need to be having so much fun. I love it for them. Yeah. And it seems like they are totally having fun. At least Lydia Grace is. She's going to the bar. She's got a drawer full of condoms. She's she's getting fucked. I mean, you know what, girls? Live your life. Yes. Yes. Live, the, live your single life. Uh, yeah. And there was that curious interchange when they're in Lydia Grace's bedroom and we see Olivia kind of asking her, like, how do you do it? Like, how do you go out to bars and just let guys crowd you and touch you and buy you drinks? And Lydia's like, well, there's boundaries, but I mean, I'm out there to have a good time. Mm-hmm. And Olivia is kind of trying to give us this idea that she doesn't know anything about that life. Yeah, I don't buy it. But I'm kind of clocking her. I'm like, come on, Olivia. I don't buy it. You've been all around the world and I, 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 I know you've been into bars and pubs all around the world and you've met a few men yourself. Uh So don't act all brand new. Yep. And now you're posting videos on Instagram about hickeys and how you're a sexual being like, shut up. She's trying to like play into this idea, though, that she's innocent and she's just getting out of this divorce. And that all may be true. Like she may be not being a hoe. She may be mm-hmm. totally innocent and not know what to do with well, anything. Well, Lydia Grace even says that she's the one who likes to play Party. the field yeah. and go out and date. But it's Olivia who wants to find her soulmate. Yeah, that's fair. But I feel like she's been fucking at this okay. point. I mean, that's Our totally fine. So noted. That's totally fine. And then... Olivia and Lydia Grace oh my God. go to get a tarot card reading, which at first I was like, ugh, this is going to be dumb. But that tarot card I reader, girl. I thought it was so interesting. Mm-hmm. I was wondering to myself, self, now did that tarot card reader talk to the producers, get the 411 on Olivia and her life? Like, did she look them up on the internet? Mm. Did she know they were coming in advance? Did she know all the things to say? Mm. But I was also watching the cards as she was flipping them. And I was like, mm, okay, the interpretations of the things that she was saying not necessarily made sense to me because it's all subjective but i was like i don't know the more i heard the tarot reader speak and also counsel olivia the more she kind of felt to me to be a little bit legit and of course fortune tellers psychics there's a lot of them who are phonies totally yeah absolutely but there was something about this one i was Mm -hmm. like ooh, 
interesting. I felt the energy of it. I'm like, this is kind of legit. But at the same time, it's like whether or not the person wants to accept it and is going to actually go through with it. And Olivia's reaction to it told me she was shocked. Like she was like, the fuck, bitch. So anyway, they start the reading first off telling Olivia that she's a water soul. Mm -hmm. and she's gonna live a long life Mm -hmm. and what else she's got angel protection meaning her brother yeah which i thought was really sweet and olivia cries about this and actually this is the first time we've heard her talk about it um her brother passed away i can't remember the name i'm sorry Mm -hmm. but her brother passed away was it last year yes it was last summer i believe yeah yeah and i think it was like a car crash i think so yes or something and it was very devastating to their whole family and she kind of talks about how when she flew back home to go to the funeral the way that her family and all of the rest of the siblings that are still part of the cult dealt with it which was just about their faith like oh yeah it's god's plan like god will get us through like he's with god now it's fine and olivia is kind of struggling with her own beliefs of what happens Mm -hmm. after death and like if we go anywhere or if it's all bullshit and admitting to herself that the answer is she just doesn't know and trying to deal with how that feels to not really know where your brother is yeah i really connected with her on that like that's an existential crisis slash question that i think Mm -hmm. a lot of us have that she's had to face which would probably be even more energy or energetic important if you come out of a cult like yeah. in all of the programming that you have from the cult that has told you like what is true and what is not true like now you have to question everything right and then your brother passes and you're like well shit where is he is he e- even anywhere well, oh who yeah. am i and why am i here does it even matter like so many questions i was part of fundamentalist christianity like i was completely in the borg resistance is futile so i can i can connect with her on that for sure oh me too and i thought that that was like an actual glimpse of her authenticity like her talking about dealing with this and crying while she's talking about her struggles with faith i was like wow i really respect her talking about that and that's all valid like this is part of like in my opinion everyone's spiritual journey i feel like we all have like moments where we question that and some people question it forever or some Mm -hmm. people who think it's all bullshit like religion's all bullshit heaven's bullshit sure and that's all fair so i thought that was interesting and then we get into yeah the relationship part of the tarot reading. Uh, this was so good. It I was, was like, I was kind of surprised because yeah. she says essentially that Olivia is only going to be married once, once. And the man in her life currently is someone that she is going to reconnect with in two years. In two years, she's going to have two children, mm-hmm. presumably with the man that she's going to reconnect with. And so we all know that to be Ethan. Uh huh. And this just blows Olivia's mind because she has to conceive of a world where (laughs) that's actually possible. And from where she sits at this moment, she can't see how that would ever happen. But as she's talking to the camera afterwards, she says, you know, I have to never say never. Yeah. Because who knows what could actually happen. I thought it was interesting how the tarot reader also calls out this man who's very stuck in his ways. Yes. And that you guys are both going to have at least two relationships after each other that are not going to work out for either one of you. I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if Olivia's dating the guy that she's dating now in this episode, or if maybe she's talking to him or something, or maybe she's just flirting, whatever. But I wonder if she's thinking about like people that she's interested in and being like, are they really not going to work out? But Olivia is totally taken back by all of this. She doesn't want to accept it. She even questions the validity of the tarot reader. Sure, of which course. Which is fair. She's like, do you ever get it wrong? Of course. And the tarot reader's like, yeah, sure, whatever. But, and then there was another question Olivia asked, like, if I don't believe in the reading, can it still be accurate? And the tarot, reading, tarot reader's like, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and the tarot reader also brings up Olivia's sense of abandonment, yes. having been abandoned Trust as a issues. child, and now having been abandoned as far as she sees it um, by Ethan, and also her unforgiveness and like how she has to just be Elsa and let it go, bitch. Mm-hmm. You gotta let that shit go, otherwise you're gonna be carrying that around with you, and it doesn't serve you. And so the, she actually said some pretty important things that I hope that Olivia took to heart. 
Yeah, we'll see if she does. But I just loved how Olivia was so shook by it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't have to believe it. It's like totally fine. Mm-hmm. And it's probably not going to work out that what way. What if they tell her, well, you don't fit on the show anymore because you're not a plath anymore and go on and have a great life, but you can't be in front of the cameras. And so then she comes back around in two years time and she engages Ethan again and she tries to get back with him in order to get back on the show. That would be wild i know i'm seeing a ton of comments on instagram not on reddit because everybody on reddit loves olivia and they want just a spinoff of olivia plath but everybody on instagram is like why is this bitch on our tv we don't care about her life we don't want to see her anymore get her off and i echo that sentiment <laughs> <laughs> well i can i can kind of see how that might happen like at some point it's like well what is your usefulness the to the franchise like what are you actually contributing yeah but at this point i'm enjoying what she's giving i just have to admit it to you beatrice i'm not okay but that's okay we can agree to disagree i like lydia grace too i like her as a counterpoint mm-hmm. to olivia and she seems like she's somebody who calls out bullshit and and she will do it to olivia's face yeah but i also think she's just an interesting person to come out of her particular family and i would like to follow her as well personally i would no yeah i think she's very interesting and judging by the previews i'm kind of hoping she calls out olivia for moving on really fast with this new schlub that she's dating do we please do we want to see it and then we have barry and the older siblings and then Ethan comes down, mm-hmm. down in Cairo. They're playing some games or whatever. Mariah's home. Micah's home. Isaac's there. Lydia's there. Everybody's big, happy family. But the littles are with Kim and Ken, probably Kim, on the houseboat. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> and then Ethan shows up because he flew down from Minnesota after talking with Olivia because he needs to run away from his problems at all times. Yep exactly and avoid everything and so he's down to hang out with the family which i just really love to see it because i think one person on this show that is actually doing the work whether he's in therapy or not i think he's really trying to do the work is barry yeah and so to see all of his adult children choose make the choice to be around him see kim can't say that Uh because they do not choose to be around her but they all choose to be around him he's a safe place for them to land it's wonderful watching them play board games it's just so comfortable they feel so safe and i just love that for him i love it so much and i love that some of the older siblings have kind of matured a little bit like mariah talks about how last year her and ethan were at odds and they had like kind of a shitty relationship and she wasn't there for him and she really regrets that she kind of apologizes to ethan about that micah even says he forgives olivia and all of her bullshit he's like i just want her to be happy it's fine Mm -hmm. like let bygones be bygones so i appreciate seeing those perspectives come out um and then when ethan shows up he's like welcomed with open arms from everybody and when he's talking about his divorce everyone is just sitting there and listening they're not prying they're not asking too many questions i mean barry does end up asking him some questions but like they're so gentle and so accepting with ethan which i also really loved because we know like how much turmoil there was with mariah and with micah and with basically the whole family but they all look sad. They're like, we feel bad that your marriage fell apart. And we feel bad that you're so unhappy. I know. I did like Barry saying to the camera, though, he's like, yeah, I knew they were going to get divorced. Like, Everybody did in America, Barry. Yeah. So I, I kind of liked him saying that. Um, and I felt bad for Ethan having to break the news to the whole family because it seems like this was the first that they were all hearing of it. But they all weren't surprised about it They're don't just, they all watch the show with us i, I mean, don't know didn't yeah, they know it but ethan historically has just been kind of a private person and up in minnesota and i don't think he had been visiting very much but i liked how ethan made a point to say that it's ironic that he had to give up his relationships with the family and all the siblings and cut off all ties to make his marriage work and then his marriage falls apart and who's left the family Yep, they never left. Mm-hmm. They're still there for him. That so he I thought shunned, that, was great. that he turned away, yeah. that he went no contact with. They're still standing and they still embrace him with open arms, yeah. which I think is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And like for as crazy as this family is and how dysfunctional they are, first of all, every family's dysfunctional in their own way. The fact that they all like love each other and are still there for each other unconditionally, I think is really great. And I like that about them. And then the older siblings leave to go play more board games. And it's just Ethan and Barry. And this 
tugged at my heart a little bit. Did it? Yeah, because Why, I thought, Beatrice? Your I, cold, dead raccoon I'm my heart? my cold, dead heart. Oh. Skipped a beat. Because Barry, I just thought, was being like the dad of the year. Such a good dad. I mean, so supportive. The dad I never had. I, seriously. The dad I wished I had. Seriously. He was so soft and so sweet and just like trying to commiserate with him and be like look i know where what you're going through i'm getting divorced and it fucking sucks and i'm here for you and you can talk to me about anything you want and whatever and ethan kind of opens up a little bit to this which is very surprising because he's such a hard nut to crack it's rare and he talks about how he felt rushed into signing the divorce papers with olivia and barry straight up tells him don't rush Mm-hmm. be petty because he's not rushing I with Kim it. yeah oh, that was so good and they just kind of talk about like their feelings like Ethan's super fucking depressed and Barry says something very poignant he's like you know depression's just a visitor right mm. it's not yeah. gonna be there forever that's deep oh I love be boo bop Barry yep depression comes it sits down sits down next to you and at some point it gets up and it goes yeah it's not going to be there forever yeah I thought that was really good such a dad thing to say yeah and then at the end Barry's super validating to Ethan and says you did all that you could I watched you put so much work into that relationship and I know it didn't work out but you did everything you could so don't beat yourself up over it because Ethan is Ethan feels like a failure right so I thought that was really good. Ethan felt validated by his dad. And all is well. All is well. And I was wondering when they were filming this particular scene, because he said it was like 40 degrees in Minnesota. Oh, so so nice. it was probably like October of last year, which is also when last season started to air. Mm. So Ethan hasn't yet seen it play back and seen all of the things that Olivia had said to camera or all of the things that were happening behind the scenes. He hasn't seen that yet. Oh, shit. Yeah. So by the by the end of this season or spring, he's going to have probably a different perspective and we know that he does because of course he's now on this motorcycle journey across the country to have his own experiences and live his own life oh god i want to hear him talk more about it because historically he's not saying anything bad about olivia or anything like that the only thing he said i guess negative about her is that she didn't think that him sacrificing his relationship with his family was actually a sacrifice right. or like worth it to fix their relationship. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that kind of develops. Yes. As the season goes on. Yeah. And as he's watching it, like the, as he's watching last season and he's filming this season, like how much of what he's saying is going to shift and change. Oh God. I can't wait. Yeah. Good stuff. So juicy. Good stuff. And then we have like a little bit of a preview where we get to see Lydia Plath singing her songs yeah to the family sweet little lydia oh my god with a heart burning for jesus yeah jesus is carrying her yeah there's only one set of footprints (laughs) in the sun oh god then we see olivia and lydia grace going out to the bars honey living their single life with lydia giving a fake name jackie oh my god that's funny i think it's funny that olivia wore a blazer to a bar but that's okay (laughs) she looks like a realtor but that's okay get yourself out there girl she's discovering herself yes she still looks gorgeous yep and then we have ethan going down to florida to see the little siblings and kim which is a little interest like i'm wondering why i mean but that's how important i think he views his relationship with his siblings Mm -hmm. actually that he's willing to put up with kim who he still has a huge problem with and who he hasn't seen her for like two years two years two years he's willing to drive down there just to see the littles and be in her presence oh do we think he's gonna talk to her at all because i kind of don't i feel like she's gonna make her presence be known so he's gonna have to talk to to her i mean (laughs) quite large it's quite a large no. presence no large presence she's got a large aura her energy of sugar her energy. stop <laughs> it oh no well and kim even calls ethan unpredictable and says that he could have a lot of feelings stewing and brewing mm-hmm. that will just come out unpredictably and i'm like girl what do you fucking mean like there's a lot of shit that you did to hurt him yeah and bother so like it's not you are a massive hypocrite yes and some of your children really resent you about it rightfully so you just are scared to have to face it and have one of them call you out she triggers me so much for that it's so annoying like how can you be so unaware of like how shitty you were as a parent like i know every parent makes mistakes like no parent's perfect but like just 
admit to it. Just accept it and get over it. And yeah. like acknowledge it for your kids. She's one of those people though that can't look at herself accurately. Nope. But the body keeps the score, honey. It does. And you know what I mean score. when I say like the body keeps like you can lie it's to yourself all you want. You can tell yourself that something is this way when it's that mm -hmm. way you can do that but your body knows the truth yep it's going to come out in your sleep it's going to come out in your dreams dreams it's going to come out in your physicality your, your, your body's body. going to start your sugar physicality your body's going to start breaking down like uh -huh. him you understand right that you destroyed your entire family it was you that lobbed the grenade into the center of all of these beautiful people and destroyed this family you know that yep. you may not want to accept it you might want to blame Bibu Bop Berry. You have all of your excuses. You can continue to lie about your adulterous ways with Kim, not with Kim, but with Ken. Yeah. But your body is keeping the score. We can see it all over you, honey, even if you're denying it. It's hard to miss. Oh, come on now. I'm just saying. Stop it. <laughs> it's hard to miss. I'm, but it, it's true. Like, it is true. People who are in denial to that <sighs> level, people who have hurt other people and deny it to themselves, those are the kind of people who break down and get sick and et cetera. And I'm not speaking that into an existence no, no, no. for her. Yeah. I want her to deal with her shit and apologize and mean it and make amends but like until you do until you do right by your children and by your ex-husband honey you're gonna have issues yep. you're gonna be cracking your car into trees because you're drunk yep 100 percent. and i don't want that for you uh, i don't want it either but like you have to own up your sh own up to your shit otherwise you're just gonna be a piece of shit so i just I and don't they know. may not forgive you they may not want to have relationships with you but guess what you're not entitled to have relationships with all of these people because you're yep. the one who damaged the relationship exactly but that doesn't mean you don't have to say you're sorry and try to make amends. It doesn't mean that you don't have to change yourself and change your life, Kim. Right. That's what I want to see on my television. I want one person, Cody Brown, for Robin real. Brown, Kim Plath. I want one person to take accountability for the shit that they've done to other people and to themselves and then do something about it to make it better. I know. It's God, like my kingdom for that. Why is it so hard? It's not that hard to just, well, I mean, I guess it is to admit Guilt, that you're wrong. Shame. Yeah, but get over it. It's part of the human experience. We yes. fuck up. Yep. We hurt people. We came here to have all of these different experiences and some of us make huge mistakes. Yeah. And until you learn from them, you're just you're just going to be destined to repeat them in exactly. some way or another. Now we sound like the tarot reader. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we should do raccoon tarot reading. We should. We've talked about that. We have on Patreon. Fake psychic predictions. <laughs> I mean, yes, hey. Yes, we have. But I really enjoyed this, my love. Me too. It was a good time. It was a good time. Do you want to talk a a little bit about those teen hoes on um, Unexpected. I do. Let's get into Unexpected. We will cover the last couple yeah. of weeks because we missed last week. Yes. Yeah. Start us off, babe. We'll start with Jenna. Her BFF Delaney comes into town for I her birthday. I don't like Delaney. Me not neither. at all. Oh my gosh, she's a free so radical. She's here to dust things up so and make trouble. She's a little hoe. I did watch the viral video of her beating the shit out of somebody in a porta potty so at a Morgan trashy. Wallen concert. <laughs> Super trashy. Not even twenty one years I old mean. yet. The thing about you, Delaney, is you haven't had your shit rocked yet. Uh huh. So you're out here acting a fool. But one of these days, you keep doing that. Somebody's gonna rock your shit and you're going to grow up a little bit oh yeah but i if i'm jj i don't want to see her around jen or i jenna. loved jj these last two episodes mm -hmm. i mean he's looking out for jenna and looking out for their family and the fact that she's a mom now and she needs to stop acting like a fool like delaney and he's like i don't think she's a good influence on her and she's not no she's terrible and we even see flashbacks of jenna and delaney freaking partying like crazy when she didn't have luca one night and they're like drunk and dancing around on the bar tables and stuff and being crazy i'm like what are you doing i mean i know you're 19 20 you are 19 so what and can 20 like that is the age that you do things like that well not in a bar because you're not legal yet but well, i mean you... that is the age that you get into stuff like yeah. that but at the same time you had a baby honey and it does change your life forever but you can't take the teen out of a teenager. That's true. But JJ doesn't like it. JJ is ready to move on to mm -hmm. the next season of his life. I think he wants to get Jenna pregnant. I totally. think he's hoping that he does. He wants to marry this girl. He wants to lock it down. So he does not like Delaney, who is in town for Jenna's birthday. She's turning 20, right? 21? 
I think she's turning 20. I think she's drinking. No, she can drink now. So I think she's 21. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She's here for the birthday and birthdays are like a really big deal for Jenna and Delaney. Okay, whatever. Freaking JJ buys her a $1,500 purse. I'm like, you are so Which is boiled. a really ugly purse. It's horrible. It's a Chloe like purse. Why would you buy that? I mean, whatever. Oh gosh, put a down payment on something that matters for like a real. car or like pay off my debt. I know, seriously. Like, what are you doing? Why are people doing this? But anyway. But they go out. They're having fun or whatever well no it's i think delaney and jj go and get some su- surprises like a, from a her for her or something some balloons and jj's not having it yeah he's quiet by nature though yes it's not personal i don't think no like i think delaney is taking it like jj doesn't like her but i mean he doesn't it, well especially the more she pushes it with yeah. him and she's like well i mean are we cool are we friends and he's like um i don't know you bitch but he doesn't say that yeah he just says yeah we're fine we're friends i'm cool it's fine but like she's making something out of it and he doesn't appreciate it which we learn later because when delaney and jenna go out to party he starts texting jenna incessantly which is kind of crazy. I'm according like, to out. Delaney. Yeah. Not according to Jenna, though. Well, it seemed like it from the, the editing. I mean, it seemed yeah. like they were texting a lot. But Jenna wants to text him. She loves him. She cares about him. And then JJ texts Jenna and is like, yeah, I didn't really like Delaney in the car ride there. She was kind of annoying. And then Jenna stupidly shows Delaney the text message, which I'm just like, so immature. But they're also like 12 years old. So like, what right. can I expect? Right. And then this select sets delaney off and she's like wow he's such a little bitch why can't he say it to my face yeah because you're intense yeah you don't really want to do and she is putting jenna in the middle and i suppose jj is too to some degree but at the same time like in terms of like your hierarchy of relationships like jj is the most important which actually jenna seems to acknowledge she does like i wouldn't like it if he were out at bars just wilding out i would not like it so i want to respect him as well so i'm like oh my god I like that. Is she maturing a little bit? A little bit. We do love to see that, Jenna. Yeah. But Delaney doesn't want any part of that. Delaney's a toxic friend. She is. She's going to be one of those people that's like, what? So you're a mom now, so you can't have fun? Yeah, because I got responsibilities. Mm -hmm. I got to grow up a little bit. Sorry. I'm not 20 years old and single anymore. I got a whole man. I got a baby. I'm brewing one up right now. (laughs) Unbeknownst to myself. Hello. But Delaney, oh my gosh, she's so annoying. I don't want to hear her talk anymore why is she on my television why are we featuring her at all she's annoying she's because she's drama we don't like her yeah and then the other thing that comes out of jenna and jj and his cranium and delaney is that aiden it's a big head (laughs) it's it's a huge head (laughs) big one huge mega mind um aiden apparently filed for emergency custody right to fuck with jenna which makes me laugh a little bit it's terrible though why does it make you laugh because jenna's i've up till now up until her saying she wants to be a better person for jj i don't i have not liked her oh yeah because of how she treats her father because she is so incredibly spoiled, spoiled. so that just i mean i thought it was kind of funny but yeah it's it's going to be a headache for her because he's filing for emergency custody he wants luca to live with him which is a bunch of horseshit Total. because he never even sees luca he agreed that if jenna for how do you say that forego if jenna waived his child support <laughs> let's just say then he would let her move to myrtle beach so yep. they had a verbal agreement but like you have been saying week after week like did you get that shit in writing probably well, not it sounds like you didn't yeah so now you're screwed so now you have to go back to altoona pennsylvania whatever that is and deal with him in court <laughs> which is gonna be so annoying but i mean yeah. i'm intrigued to see the drama of all of that play out and jj as she leaves is like well i love her, but i'm not moving back to pennsylvania so if she has to go back and deal with her because baby daddy. he has a career i know he's I 19 guess. years old and he has a career as a landscaper is that what it is? i think he's like got a is landscaping business i oh want to say God. it's a landscaping business which Courage. good i'm glad you're working and that's taking great. care of your family jj that's great hard working man yeah we love that yeah <laughs> and then we have emily and nate Emily, she's having a hard time. Yeah, so she got induced. Yes, because 
is it her or Kaylee? I'm getting them mixed up, but she was not dilating. Yeah. And so she had to get induced. She went into labor last week and it was a real drag. And it's such a shock because nobody knows until you go into labor what that actually means. It sucks. And she's a teenage girl. Let's yeah. face it. She's a kid. And yep. she had no idea like the seriousness of the pain involved in going into labor. And so she did not handle that well. No, she didn't. And then the baby was also rotated in such a way where he wasn't coming through that Sunny birth side canal. up. Mm-hmm. So he's faced up. Yep. And they thought the baby would move and he didn't. And so now she has to have an emergency C-section. And she's terrified, rightfully so, because she's a baby and she mm-hmm. doesn't know. And it's scary. And I felt really bad for her and her dad. I was actually surprised and happy to see her dad show some kind of emotion other yes. than, you know horny for nate's mom karen (laughs) yeah her dad actually tears up and cries about how scared he is for her to go through an emergency c-section he gives her basically like his lucky necklace or something that he's worn for the last several decades makes her wear that when she goes into surgery and then she's in fucking surgery for like what 10 hours is what they were saying why which Uh, doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense at all i think it's mm, like an hour yeah it's not supposed know. to be that long but what do i know far be it from me i had a vaginal birth i had a baby come down the shit honey <laughs> and out the body so i don't know <laughs> i don't know either yeah. um so yeah she has the c-section she is fine the baby's healthy the baby's a big one you're like eight pounds almost it's, nine pounds yeah almost nine pounds he's a big one he got stuck he did get stuck he, that like, big old cranium like my dog boom yeah oh my he God. got diagnosed obese at the doctor today <laughs> he is fat <laughs> he's a fatty mcfatterson i think he's handsome he's an english mastiff though he's so he's fat. naturally very right. big boned. so what is fat yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> but baby westley forest eugene is born yes Which is cute. I like that he has two middle names because I got two middle names. And wasn't it awesome how Nate was totally there Uh, for Emily? Like he's a 16-year-old zygote of a person. But he's like rubbing her back. He's giving her hugs. He's touching her. I'd be like, don't touch me. For real. Get away from me. But I mean, Emily needs what Emily needs. And he's there for her. I just, every single week, I like Nate more and more i really like him he's stepping up to the plate and he even talks about how like during the whole c-section he was terrified and he felt so bad for emily because he's watching this girl he loves in pain and traumatized by all of this but then once baby wesley is born they're both like so happy Mm -hmm. and this wave of euphoria rushes over them and they're like wow like we created this baby and that made me so happy oh my god beatrice you were happy i was happy for them wow i thought it was very sweet it was sweet but i feel like Emily's going to continue to be a bitch to Nate though. Oh, 100%. She's going to get into it with Taryn, who's going to have to stick up for her sweet, <sighs> sweet boy, Nate. For real. He's trying his best. He is. He's just a child. And then we have Lily. Ugh. I am so bored. Oh, uh, I propose that we just stop talking about her. <laughs> Why do we have to talk about her? I she like does not have care. an existing child in her belly. No. She is no longer a teenager. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care about her mother. I don't care about her father. I don't care about her kids. I don't care, I don't care about her wedding. I don't care about her wedding dress. I don't care at all. It's so boring. So she goes shopping for a wedding dress. <laughs> And she tries on, she's got a budget of $1,500 uh-huh. and she's trying on all these dresses that look very matronly. Yeah, terrible. And I just wouldn't personally spend thousands of dollars or even $1,500 for a dress that looks bad no. on me, but whatever. Her mom starts bitching about the price and mm-hmm. it's a bummer. And then they get the flu and it's three weeks away from her wedding and they have to take the daughter to the doctor. She's got flu B or I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she's gonna get sick and is it gonna affect the wedding and everything's at stake they gotta quarantine and- the mom can't be around any of them because she's a germaphobe and i don't care heads up lily nobody cares literally, literally no nobody cares. cares like you're ruining this entire show for <laughs> me know. you're ruining my experience i'm done got off my table tired of it got off my table and then we have anaya and day day which we didn't see in this episode but last week she got induced honey and she had their baby. Flames. And Ashley, Flames. the worst mother in the history of mothers. Rage. Ugh, had to take the whole Rage. 
like she had to take the, all the attention away from Day Day, from Anaya. She's not even there to help, right? She's she doesn't filming. Care. She thinks she's doing her part by filming at an angle that Day Day can't even see because he's watching her live stream or whatever. Yeah. But she's not there to help Anaya in any way. She laughs when Anaya asks her to rub her feet, but she gets to be in the room and Day Day gets to be a spectator over the phone and ashley has the gall honey she has the audacity to say oh well day day you and i had the same experience because right. i was sure. experiencing it over the phone trying to make sure that you had a good experience over the phone so chill out yeah like i was in the same place like it was essentially the same thing what like, a bitch. absolutely it wasn't because if day day were there he would probably do for anaya what nate was doing for emily uh -huh. like before you got there ashley bitch ass ho ass Ugh. day day was there rubbing her feet mm -hmm. giving her love listening to her being with her yep. being a partner wanting to be present and then your stink ass face comes into the delivery room god damn do i not like this woman. i really don't like she gets her. to cut the fucking cord she does she gets the pleasure of cutting the cord yeah that is what day day should have done yep and she takes it away from him and you know what she doesn't give a fuck because she's a proud ass woman well guess what pride cometh before a fall facts <sighs> well this what's really frustrating nice. she's not kind i don't like her what's really frustrating about all of it is that anaya is now doing damage control on tiktok and like trying to defend her mom and i being saw like, some of that oh it's just edited that way my mom's not actually a bad person you guys got no. it wrong and like anaya and day day aren't together anymore which really sucks spoiler I'm, after spoiler. the fact spoiler yeah but i'm i'm assuming that ashley had something to do with that and kind of manipulated anaya into thinking that day day is is like this piece of shit which to me i haven't seen anything bad yet besides the fact that he fell asleep at the ultrasound appointments well but maybe that's something with his hormones or his maybe. energy but like he's he showing up there. he's trying to be there he's a kid too he's a zygote he's trying to learn how to be a man and be there for anaya and you know what anaya would prefer that he was there yeah but no you got a barrel in and you have to take over and you have to change fundamentally change the entire experience not just for anaya but for day day and for anaya's I think that's so fucked up, honestly. It is really fucked up. Just, I don't like you. I really don't like it. I really hate that she used the mom card to get in as the one visitor and then rob Day Day of a chance of being able to see his son be born. Yep. It's fucked up. Yeah, nobody I likes you. In America, nobody likes you. And You're the I worst. don't care, Anaya, if you want to make a bunch of TikToks talking about how we don't know what really happened. Okay, well, we know what we see, though. And your mom is the worst. Your mom's toxic. And you're manipulated by your mom's toxicity. The worst. She's just going to perpetuate the same bullshit, too. And mm -hmm. that's what sucks. Yep. And then last but not least, we have Kaylee and Graham. I'm so sick of this Kaylee. She's a brat. She is such a brat. She told her mother to shut up. Now, oh, I wish girl. I wish my child would have. Well, there was that one time she told me to go fuck myself. Real, I know. I've heard that story. <laughs> she was a bit older. Yeah. And I did have to collect myself in that moment. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? But no, I did raise my child to be fundamentally very respectful and you can see with Kaylee that she's just not and I wonder why it seems to be targeted towards her mother only not her father mm -hmm. it kind of gives me the vibes of like the mother is treated that way by the father too mm -hmm. have you ever seen like toxic and or abusive family situations where there's one person in the family who's picked on by everybody there yeah that's what i'm kind of getting for mandy mm -hmm. because kaylee feels 100 percent empowered to talk like this to her mother honey woo. I don't like this girl. She's also the youngest too. So of course she's going to get the most lax and she's going to get the Spoiled. most like everything. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate because they're just creating this. <laughs> like so Mandy can sit there and bitch about how she treats her and all of this stuff and how she's ungrateful. But I'm like, girl, you're literally giving her a car. At 15, you are literally spoiling her and you are allowing her to talk to yes. you like that, which is wild to me, but whatever. They're driving to Kaylee's 40-week appointment to check her survey. If I had ever talked like that to my father. Oh my God, you know I would have got my, my ass, ass beat. would have been beat. Oh, for sure. And I don't um, advocate for that, but I'm just saying, like things have shifted on the planet since I was growing up. Like I could not have talked. 
I could not have treated, if my father saw me talk like that to my mother, I would have got my ass beat. Oh, for sure. I'm just like, this this girl, she doesn't get it. And I'm worried too, like when things start to get hard with the baby, when the baby comes, Mandy, are you going to be the one actually being the parent the entire time while yep. Kaylee fucks off and does what she wants? Yeah, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. I already see it. But yeah, they're going to their 40-week appointment. She calls, uh, what's her face? Kaylee calls Becca, Becky. Becky. Because Graham's at school. She tries to call Becky to see if they want to be involved in it. And of course, it goes to voicemail because they can't be bothered to answer the call of the baby mama. Like, it doesn't make Listen, any sense. Kaylee's 40 weeks pregnant. She's about That's to pop. usually when you have your baby. Yep. Graham should have his phone available 24 7 and becky as the grandmother you should have your phone on no matter what i don't care if i'm incapacitated if i'm in the hospital if i know you or my daughter are about to pop and give birth i'm like alerting everybody so that i can hear the news hello or i can get the fucking phone call like becky what is your problem i've seen people on reddit defending becky why like you didn't get it she's got personality disorder oh my like you don't God. understand well but i mean that's fair some of that is fair becky has a mental illness and i don't have any idea what it would be like to live with that and so i do understand why people you know would give her a bit of grace but i'm just i can't relate uh-uh. i can't really because i could be on my death fucking bed and if one of you girls is having a baby or if one of you girls has an emergency or if something important is happening i don't give a shit yep tell me yep I, I'm sorry, but I don't have sympathy for her at all, really, because I'm like, you've been knowing. And this has been a pattern that they have been doing throughout the entire pregnancy. So they're just showing what Kaylee and Mandy are fearing, which is that they're not going to be involved. No, they're not going to give they're going to show up for the photo ops and to cut the fucking uh-huh. cord. And that's it. And then Graham's not going to want to spend time with the kid because he's also 15 and stupid. And he's got a mom who doesn't hold him accountable. Doesn't model and demonstrate doesn't what it care. means to be a good parent, proactive, yep. active. Yep. So it's it's kind of hard for me to have grace for Becky and Graham. Personally, I'm just going to put it out there. That's Y'all fine. can think that I'm a bitch. I, no, I'm sure a lot of people agree bit. with you. Yep. So they get to the appointment. Her cervix isn't thinning, whatever that means. Well, I think it's, it's getting ready to, for the baby yeah. to come through, right? Yeah. Um, and so she's going to have to get induced. And then she has a robot baby that she's trying to practice with. I don't know why we're doing that now. And she doesn't care about the robot baby because it's a robot baby. Heads up. That's how she's going to be with her actual baby. Yeah. Mandy. Yep. Because she's 15. Yeah. Because she doesn't know how to be an adult or do anything. She wants to go back to school. She wants to be a cheerleader again. She wants to date Graham. That ain't gonna happen. Oh, it'll probably happen. You'll probably have Mandy driving her over to Becky's house so she can get pregnant again. For sure. Which I know they don't get pregnant again, but I I do think they're still together. Really? To this day? Graham and Kaylee, I believe, are still together racing their chonky chonk Easton or whatever his name is. Yeah. Cute little babies. I can't wait to see that baby, though. Yeah. I do like seeing the babies. They're the, the stars of the, the show. The best part. Yeah. Yeah. They're great. That's it. That's our unexpected recap. Yeah. So things are shitty. Babies are <laughs> happen. And babies are coming but out. Babies are never shitty. No. Babies are it's always the little angels. It's always the parents and it's their parents and it's the conditions. But the babies are angels and we love them. We do love them. Well. Is there anything else that we should say to these beautiful raccoons before we get on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Really helps us grow the pod and have more people come and see us and join the dumpster. So we really appreciate it. We will be back on Monday to talk Sister Wives Rewind. So make sure you come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and Peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.